Okay, this is the uh, student's first draft of a description, a formal description, of A Sunday on La Grand Jatte by Georges Seurat. Seurat. Uh, All right, let's read the student's description and then see how we can Im improve it. The artwork I chose for the semester is A Sunday on La Grand Jatte from George Seurat. The size of this artwork is six foot nine inches by 10 feet, and it is a horizontal oil painting. This painting shows that people enjoy relaxed life when they have free time. They take their family and go to the lake, and some people are fishing, some people are talking with each other, and the children are playing games. All right, I'm gonna stop right there and make comments. Um, it's good. Do you give the size and that it's a horizontal painting and that is a description of the forms. That's a great way to start. And then the student goes on to say, this painting shows that people enjoy a relaxed life when they have free time. That's part of the analysis. That's not part of the formal description. The formal description just describes the forms, the things that make up the work of art. Not the, the content, not the narrative, not the story. So the first step is to describe the forms, the things that you see. Not to describe any meaning or story. Only describe what can be seen and do it as simply as possible. It's a good start by saying that, quote, some people are fishing, some people are talking with each other, and the children are playing games. That's a great way to set up a mental picture, and then the next step would be to say where those specific people are, where people are fishing, which direction they're facing, how small they are, what they're wearing, etc. I'm going to continue the uh, student's description. The George Surratt chose the green as the based color. It is because the trees and grass are a big part of this painting. The color in this painting is not very bright, and even though the red is not very stand out. However, in Seurat's painting, you can see the dark and bright is very obvious. Under the trees is very dark, and another place is very bright. The people's five senses are not the key point in this painting. So, you can't see people's expressions very clearly. However, Seraph focuses on people's forms and sitting posture. That's, this is important later. Even though he just uses the simple line to draw the people's body, we can still see the people are very relaxed and comfortable. Some people are lying down under trees, some women are kneeling, and some children are running. From the painting, we can see the association of activity and inertia, so the painting is very vivid. All right, let's look at this. All right, let's, let me work this backwards. Um, the color in this painting is not very bright, and even though they're Red is not very, okay, just give me a second. Okay, even though he uses, just uses simple lines to draw the people's bodies, we can still see the people are very relaxed. Okay, that's, um, that's a line. That's a point. Okay, one of the things that, makes this painting important in art history is that Seurat is purposely not using lines. He's making very, very, very small dots, very, very, very small points. Okay, so it's false to say that he has lines. But before we get to that, Let's go back to the beginning of the description. Yes, this is a horizontal painting because 
it is wider than it is long. Perfect. Size. Not worried about whether people are having a good time or not. That we will save for the analysis, not for the formal description. Take their family to the lake. Okay, so in formal description, so it's a horizontal painting. You can even say it might look like a bright sunny day. To the left of the painting, we would see the edge of the lake. The edge of the lake forms a triangle, roughly, and the left side of the triangle that continues out of the left side of the painting is approximately half the size of the painting on the left vertical axis. The top of the triangle, the shore of the lake, continues into the right of the painting about two-thirds of the way, and then the shore comes back from right to left to approximately the midpoint of the painting, and that is the shoreline. The lake itself is made, well, the water itself and the gives an appearance of reflecting as it is made of small dots of blue and green and white. In the foreground on the right side are two figures in profile, which means we can see the side of them. They are standing on the right side facing the left. The person closest to the viewer appears to be a woman. We can see from her head to her feet, and she occupies 80% of the painting's height, the majority of the painting's height. And there's a woman, uh, sorry, there is a man just behind her, which would be to her right side, mostly obscured by her, who is of a similar height, maybe slightly taller. The woman is standing very still. Her left arm, facing the viewer, is relaxed at her side straight down. Her right arm, we can see, is raised and holding an umbrella, which rests on her shoulder. And the umbrella is behind the two figures. Further in the distance behind the umbrella, we can see the yellow and red and tan of trees. These two are made of very, very small dots of different colors. Near the center of the painting are a few figures. In the center right are two figures kneeling, facing left, one in front of the other. The one that is in the front is in red, with a hat in perfect profile with an umbrella over her head. Okay, do you see how I'm making a description? Um, I'm essentially mapping out. I'm making a map of where things are, what direction they're facing, what colors they are, how tall they are, where they're located, in reference to each other, and I just can keep working through the painting. And then I can get to details of how the painting is constructed. I'm not worried about what any of this means yet. If I were to divide the space up and simplify it, Let's change 
land. Please note that I'm using lines to do this. I'm using lines to do this. Of course, if I were to do this like Surat, I would do it with very, very small little points of light or paint. And that becomes very important later on. So. Describe the forms that you see. Describe the larger ones first and then work your way into detail. Describe shapes, location, where the shapes are, uh, what way they're facing, um, what color they are, uh, whether they're light or dark, whether they are have a rough texture or a smooth texture, and do not describe any meaning or story or narrative. Only describe what can be seen. You're creating a, a visual picture in someone's mind. All of the other stuff comes in a later part of the exercises.